Welcome everyone to another video and I've been invited here to a place called Nature's Rest near Halwell in Devon. Now this is just a beautiful mixed habitat, completely private. I'm going to be spending the next three days here photographing as much as I can. I can definitely hear a blackbird just up here, like right next to where I'm staying. I've just heard a second one. So maybe they're kind of singing to each other. One of the blackbirds, he kind of started up here, kind of just above my car, and then he flew across right to the top of this tree, right to the very top uh, to sing. And then he flew across over to here, to the top of this tree, almost like he's doing a complete circle. And the other one still seems to be in the same place. The light is absolutely beautiful. I'm just getting uh, just that lovely evening light. I think it's probably about half an hour to sunset now. Uh, so I'm getting the last of the week's sunshine. It's just shining across this field. At the edge of this field, there's actually quite a lot of cuckoo flower, which is a, quite a low growing plant. It's white, but kind of with a bit of a pinkish tinge to it, I'd say. Now, I know this is a food plant for some butterflies, uh, particularly the orange tip. So I'll definitely be looking out for orange tip. I don't know if you can hear that. Just the loudest roe deer bark I think I've ever heard. Didn't see any. Uh, I was just about to say how quiet I need to be at this corner and I just heard the roe deer barking. Just heard the roe deer again. Kind of in the same area, a little bit further away. Just got to keep an eye out. It's the thing with road deer, you never know. You think you know where they are, and then the next minute you turn around a corner and they're just staring at you, and you don't know what to do. Just heard a couple of ravens, I think there's four. Just a really distinctive croak that the raven has and four of them just flew over, uh, kind of just above the horizon.
Really simple shot here, beautiful beech leaves, and it's just the way the light is hitting it that's just attracted me to it in the first place. Just really nice soft back lighting through the leaves, and the surrounding bank is kind of like the backdrop, so that's shaded, so it stands out really, really well. Um, the thing with this type of photography is just not to overcomplicate it, I think. Often just what you see first is probably the best thing, and generally it's just best to just go with your instincts as what I've is what I've done here. So I'm just trying to get that effect of the leaves just kind of coming out towards the camera. Uh, but I've not gone with a wide angle lens. I don't think that's probably gonna work the best. Um, I've just using a 50 millimeter standard lens for this shot. And really just tried to find compositions that I think work. I think there's only one or two that actually works, but horizontal um, and vertical. Uh, wide aperture, F5, that's kind of how I want it to look. I'm absolutely loving this scene I'm looking at right now. Now there is actually a lot of uh, pussy willow which the bees have been buzzing on and I might take a shot of that but I'm finding what's behind it way way more interesting to my eye and that is at the bottom we've got this uh, flower which is stitchwort I'm not sure if it's lesser or greater and it's just kind of on the bottom of this bank and then surrounding it is just these fantastic trees just with these twisted trunks uh, covered in moss and the light just seems to be just really really good here it's, it's very much under shade to where the flowers are it's bringing out the colors really well I've stopped here because again I just really really like the light uh, there's another bank this time I think it's it looks like hazel that's growing and I've taken a shot and apart from quite nice light there's nothing amazing but the reason I've taken a picture is because there's actually a sat so tell me if you can see the sat somewhere in the picture So one thing I might not have mentioned is I am in fact staying in a teepee because, you know, why not just do something different, stay in a teepee. Uh, but it's pretty good, I'll show you inside. So um, yeah, I've got this massive teepee all to myself. I've uh, got my ca camp bed there, which is pretty comfy. Wood burning stove, uh, plenty of space to prepare food. Got a cool box down there, got plenty of stuff in the cool box. Uh, all my junk down there on the floor. And probably the most important is my little gas stove, which I've never used in my life until now. And the main thing is kettle, as long as I've got a kettle so I can make a cup of tea. So 
So I have just had one of the best encounters with a rabbit. It was a young rabbit and it was just so tolerant. It was almost like tame, uh, which apparently it pretty much is. Uh, I actually had to back off because I was too close with the 400 millimeter lens. Uh, it was a bit difficult in terms of positioning because of where it was. Uh, with the backgrounds which I didn't really want in the shot so I had to work quite hard to get into the right position to get a cleaner backdrop and I got down lower as well but some of the shots I got look nice and clean So despite the horrendous wind, uh, which really got up since last night, I've come out this afternoon to look for some insects. And where I am now is actually really sheltered. I, I can hardly feel any wind at all, uh, which is probably why there's a few butterflies. I'm looking at a few butterflies uh, just flitting along this track. Oh, there's so many insects here. I didn't notice this one. It's right here. Oh, look at that. He keeps going up the stem. I think this is actually a really productive stretch. I've seen so many insects just along this edge in the grasses, kind of some bramble as well. Uh, I've seen a grasshopper, some kind of beetle, a couple of different flies, one of those like really shiny, tiny, shiny, greeny blue beetles. There's another insect just dropped down onto these grasses. It's kind of like a beetle, I don't know, some kind of beetle, no idea. It's got a big antenna. If you know what it is, tell me, because I have no idea. There's a beautiful cuckoo flower here. I'm kind of shooting towards the light. The background's fairly dark. It stands out really, really well. Uh, so I'm going to get down really, really low. I've also noticed there's some tiny, tiny little insects on one of the flowers as well.
I've got a green veined white, beautiful little butterfly. Um, and he's just resting here. Now, I don't think he's going to go anywhere for a while because it's quite cool. In fact, there was a little bit of rain. I need to try and get side on to maximise depth of field. So I can go in two directions, basically. But I'm going to shoot from this direction, um, largely because if I don't, I have to lie in a bog and I've got my limits. Um, so I'm going to shoot from where I am now. Now I can't actually get this perfectly flat parallel, the camera and the butterfly nice and parallel because uh, I can't get the tripod low enough basically. I could maybe put it on the camera bag but I'm not sure that would work too well so I kind of have to sacrifice that a little bit. I'm actually using the screen, which is fantastic. Obviously, it's a great thing about some of these mirrorless cameras. So it means I don't have to get really low down and uncomfortable. I've just got the flip out screen and then I'm just focusing with live view. Live view, it's always live view. Uh, so I'm just using the screen, zooming in and then focusing manual focus on that. And I'm just focusing pretty much like where the head meets the body. I'm keeping the aperture wide f5.6 to blur the background. One of the things you'll see me using there is these small pair of scissors and I'm just clipping out just a few blades of grass that are distracting in the frame. So it could be behind the butterfly or in front of it, you know, it might be both. And it's very, very minimal. I probably did like four or five blades of grass and it makes such a difference keeping everything nice and clean. Now I keep this in my macro kit. So as well as the scissors, I've got things like tent pegs, um, knitting needles, a few other things as well. You probably noticed the, the light I've got, the LED that's on top of the camera on the hot shoe and I've just got that as an option but I've actually chosen not to use it and I do this sometimes particularly with uh, with white subjects like butterflies like this one the LED light can be really really useful uh, for insects throw a bit more light into the shadows but sometimes you just don't need it and I suspected I probably wouldn't I'm perfectly happy how this looks with the light um, I, I don't even think it needs some reflection, maybe I'll add a tiny bit of reflection, um, but I think the LED is just going to overpower it. There's a lot of deer here and you can see the tracks everywhere, they're just so obvious, all the tracks are taken. Uh, you've got bigger tracks and smaller tracks, so you can tell when it's a red deer and then when it's a lot smaller it's the roe deer. Views of the deer have been very, very fleeting. Uh, I've had a couple of glimpses of roe deer, usually a buck that was barking, and then I had a slightly longer encounter with a red deer hind earlier, but she saw me coming a long way off so I didn't approach to try to get a bit of footage. Her uh, camera didn't want to focus because she was kind of behind a load of branches. It was just impossible to focus. I find it a really interesting habitat here. It's a bit of a mixture. You've kind of got fairly small like grass meadows and wildflowers in there as well. And then you've also got areas with what looks like sedge, uh, rushes, just kind of looks a bit more dense, a little bit more like scrub perhaps. Um, and then you've got lots of hedgerows and some really interesting banks, like quite built up, quite tall earthy banks with uh, trees growing out of there, some nice tree roots, mosses, there's plenty of lichens around as well. And then some of the fields are sort of very sheltered. They're fairly small, but they're kind of really enclosed in all directions. Um, and just quite a nice variety of trees as well. If you are interested in coming here to do some camping out here to connect with nature, get away from things, then have a look at the link in the description below. Uh, beautiful place, lovely and wild. I say it's almost like being on a private nature reserve really having it all to yourself and fantastic people as well. Thanks very much for the video, video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.